Houston. This is Jason Hammond, the life science educator and the science outreach manager here at the Children's Museum Houston. And I am inside our wonderful eco station to give you an educator moment sponsored by the Strake Foundation about our friends, the insects. Now you might notice in front of me, I have a little habitat here. Inside this habitat, I have not one, but two Madagascar hissing cockroaches. These are my personal pets. They are named Louie and Ella. In a moment, you'll be able to see them much closer. I'll put them out in my hand and they'll crawl around, hopefully. Hopefully they'll hiss too, but you can never make them hiss. And really, they're gonna be the stars of the show because what I'm gonna talk about right now is insect anatomy, uh, how insects are important, uh, how you can take care of your own insect if you want one at home, and just some fun facts about insects. So, when we talk about insect anatomy, that's when I want you to see the stars, the Louie and Ella. I don't know which one I'm gonna pull out. I can't handle two at once, so I'll just pull one out and I'll let you know who it is at that point. But first of all, let me just tell you a little bit about insects. Um, insects are the most hardy population of any animal in the world. There are 900,000 different species of insects. So they are everywhere. They're on every single continent. They're even found in Antarctica, uh, some and uh, they are definitely in every single country and there are tons of insects within Houston all around you that you see, that you don't see, that are crawling everywhere. So within the insect world, about 40% of all insects are beetles. There's about 350,000 different species of beetles running across this uh, con uh, world of ours and beetles are the ones that you pretty much find in every continent. Uh, why are insects important? Well, they help keep the earth fertile. They do a lot of different things within the earth and they eat different things that we don't like. So some insects eat the insects that what we would call pests and some insects uh, feed other animals like spiders, which we sometimes call pests, but they shouldn't be called pests because they're doing a lot for us. So their main importance is without insects on this earth, the earth would not be the way it is in terms of our agricultural processes, in terms of how fertile the earth is to grow things, in terms of helping to decompose or eating decompo uh, decomposing things. They do all of that. So insects are really our friends. Now, obviously they're very, very successful. So sometimes there's too many of them and that's when spiders and other animals take care of them. Uh, there's a generic term called bugs. Bugs would be arachnids, which are spiders. It would be insects like the Madagascar hissing cockroach. But we're mainly gonna talk about insects today because of their special, unique anatomy and the fun ways in which they can be a pet. So let me pull out Louie or Ella and we'll talk about the anatomy and why they are how they are. Okay, so I have removed Ella from her enclosure. And just again, the enclosure is really simple. It's uh, the, the wood chips that you would find, say like, in a, you know, you barbecue with them or you would put inside your garden some people. I have a little bit of a uh, rotted potato in there because they like that. But really, if you wanted to, you could just throw, I know it sounds funny, but you could just throw in some dog food or cat food, they'll eat that up. They do tend to eat like rotted stuff. It's really good for them. Um, they'll still let it sit there and rot a little bit as they, um, and as it gets like mo moister, they'll eat more of it. But you do want to be careful. Every week or so, you do want to take out the rotted food and put some new food in because it starts to get bad for the wood chips and whatnot. They start to get kind of um, rotted themselves. And you can notice there's a little water dish over here. You can put a little bit of water in. Uh, they don't drink much water. Actually, if you put too much water in, they might fall in and then they, uh, they, they're in trouble. Uh, they fall in, they can't get out very easily. So that's sort of the enclosure and you don't have to have this fancy plastic box. You can put them in a shoe box, just make sure you put some air holes in it, but not too big so they can crawl out. Also, uh, you can put them inside like a plastic cup if you want, but that's really not too much room for them and it's hard to get the branch in. So you wanna give them a sufficient space for them to explore and run around. Uh, Cause you don't want them to be unhappy. You want them to, like any pet you have, you want them to be able to move around and have some fun and whatnot. Now, Ella over here on my finger, it's kind of hard to see all of her body parts, but you can right now really especially see her head and her antenna waving around. Uh, she's waving her antenna around to kind of guide her along. She wants to make sure she's got a clear path and everything's good. Her head's like right underneath there with her little compound eyes. 
the compound eyes you will not see. Um, her thorax is above her head, and it's these three pieces right there, and then her abdomen are the back part right over here. Okay, whoa, sorry girl. Uh, she has six legs that you saw her grab onto my finger with when she almost fell down. And that's pretty much the anatomy of all insects. They have a head, a thorax, an abdomen. They have six legs, they have antenna, and they have compound eyes. Uh, they just all kind of look different because they're different species. Now, um, Madagascar hissing cockroaches are fine to be here, but when they are in Madagascar, they live on the ground. And when they live on the ground, because they like to be around the leaves that have fallen off the trees and the bark that have fallen off the trees, and they eat stuff that is also like fruit and whatnot that have fallen off the trees. So they're kind of in a dangerous position at that point because there's lots of animals in Madagascar that could step on them, that could eat them and whatnot. And that's sort of where the development of hissing came from. Uh, the, the hissing is not a vocalization. A lot of people think they're like, making some sound with their little mouth. It's not that, they're mandibles really. What it is is there's these little holes on the side of their thorax and they push air out of those holes and that air push is what you hear. So the more stressed they are, the more air they'll push out and the, the louder the hiss will be. Ella is pretty comfortable with me as you can see, so she's not gonna hiss at me too much. When I first got her out, she was a little hissy, but right now she's fine. So she's just kind of exploring my, my finger right now. Um, but one thing you do need to know about their hissing is that they don't only hiss uh, to warn people or warn other animals. They'll hiss to, to do that. They'll also, sometimes when other cockroach comes by, and especially if they're males, they'll hiss to uh, make sure that, hey, just stay out of my territory. This is where I belong, you know? But a lot of times the males will hiss because they're trying to attract a female. They're trying to say, look at my hiss. It's the best hiss, so come on over here and have a little uh, insect babies with me, little cockroach babies with me. So it's a mating call in some cases, but most of the time it's a warning call. It's like, hey, stay away from me, you know, or get out of my territory. So yeah, that's uh, basically what they do and how they are. Like I said, right now, she's being very explorative. She's very comfortable with me, that's why. I keep doing what I'm doing because I don't want her to fall. If she falls, it doesn't necessarily hurt her, but she gets stressed out then, and I don't want her stressed out. She's having a, a big day as it is. So, in fact, I'm gonna put her back inside her right now, see if she'll let me. I'm gonna put her on the branch. She likes that branch right there. And yeah, one thing I do really want you to understand is that these are my pets. These are not just like a science tool for me. I actually care about my cockroaches. And they're as good as pet as my cat, they're as good as pet as my dog, they're as good as pet as my snake. I have a lot of different types of pets. And that's one of the things I really want people to know is that there are these different types of pets that help you learn, help you uh, respect other kinds of animals other than the, the cute furry ones. And they're also a very enjoyable pet. Like they'll hang out on the branch and you know sometimes have little wrestling matches. They'll hang upside down on the top and I don't know what they're doing that for. The reason they're able to do that is they have little hairs that stick to all the plastic and whatnot. They'll uh, bury themselves. Sometimes they'll bury themselves for a long, long time. And I'm wondering, what are they doing like that? They'll hiss at my cat because my cat will get up right into their, their face and they don't like that. So not only are they a good learning tool, but they're also just an enjoyable pet that I, I do like having. And they'll be with me three, four years. That's how long they live. But you know, there's a the male and a female, so they might have offspring and I might have more later on. So after I put Ella back inside, she started climbing her branch. And this is when I'm really fascinated by them. I just like watching them going up and down their branch. She might even fall asleep on there because again, she's had a big day. So thank you for joining me, Louie and Ella. Just so you all know, I named them Louie and Ella after Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald, two famous jazz musicians who I admire very much. And we all hope to see you here at the Children's Museum Houston soon. And we want to thank Strake again for allowing me to do this fun educator moment. And I just want to remind you, when you see an insect, be kind to it because it doesn't want to bother you. It doesn't want to hurt you. It just wants to help you. So until we meet again, thanks a lot and bye.